Hi everyone, I'm Noelle with Veravest, and today I have with me Bill Fairman and Jonathan Davis of Carolina, Carolina Capital Management. How are you guys doing? We're doing great. That's a mouthful, isn't it? Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you're doing well. Thank you. Yes, yeah, thanks for joining me today, guys. Um, so let's just get right into this. Tell us what your guys' origin story is, how you got to where you are today, and with your company. So I first became aware when I was two years old, I believe. So it aware. Two? Yeah. Yeah. You don't want me to go back that far, right? <laughs> So in the real estate business, I've been in mortgage finance for over 30 years, uh, but I was in the, typically the retail side of things where people were trying to buy homes and I would help them get them financed. Uh, eventually moved into the wholesale arena where uh, most companies at that point didn't really have their own money there were bigger companies that had money and then we would call on the smaller companies and then they would use our money. So that's kind of a breakdown of the wholesale business. Whoever had the bigger check um, had the higher amount of loans coming through. Right. Yep. <laughs> so, uh, and then I spent probably five years in the commercial uh, finance space as well. Small balance commercial. Uh, after the crash, uh, I found myself in a, industry that had shrunk to about 25% of its original size. And because I was in commercial, all the good mortgage jobs were gone by the time they stopped doing originations in commercial. <laughs> so I had gotten out of the business for a little bit, a uh, little while. Um, my sister who is Wendy Sweet is uh, my business partner. Uh, Jonathan here is also a, a, a partner in the, in the business. But my sister and I founded the company. She had been doing short-term loans for uh, a, a while. And as that business started growing, because there was an opportunity out there uh, in the marketplace for short-term finance for uh, entities, not individuals. So we started the company with uh, basically brokering other people's uh, IRAs. Jonathan, you have a pretty interesting way that you got started into the business, right? Well, um, so I, I was, I was actually, I was a, a I guess a double or dual major uh, political science sociology. I was going to go to law school um, along with everyone else during that time. Uh, <laughs> but I decided against it and uh, I got a job. Um, I knew, knew nothing about real estate. I got a job with a family office out of Nashville and started in the non-performing servicing and loan buying. So buying loans that were not paying. Um, and then I, you know, went Seems in, like a good idea. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right, yeah. Buy a loan that's not paying. It's great. Uh, but, uh, you know, and then we went to, um, scratching dent loans, commercial paper. Um, we found ourselves with uh, a lot of, uh, extra capital and I spearheaded a, uh, 12 state lending platform that we built out on short term lending, um, along with uh, broker relationships and uh, local hard money relationships. And uh, Wendy and Bill were one of them that I met. And we worked together on that front for several years uh, until we decided uh, that it would be mutually beneficial for us to work together. So, what was it almost three years ago? Uh, I came uh, and joined Wendy and Bill. Yeah, it's been uh, great ever since. We've been able to expand the business, uh, and he's been able to take a, a lot of load off of uh, Wendy and I. And uh, he's younger; he can carry more load. <laughs> I love how that works out. How you know people's different skills, and it just works way better to merge them together and join. I love that. Um, okay, how do you guys source deal flow in your company? Um. It's uh, really, we have gone to inbound uh, marketing, inbound leads. We are really big in education. So, you know, we do short term bridge loans. 90% uh, of what we do is in the single family arena. And then, you know, obviously the other 10 is in multi-tenanted commercial properties, but we're really big on education. 
Uh, we want to be the trusted source for education in our industry. So we do two hours worth of content every week. Uh, so it goes out on many platforms. Also on our website, when people go there, there's all kind of questions and answers that are on video that, um, again, that drives uh, potential borrowers into our, our pipeline. We also very uh, established in the local RIA and those are real estate investment uh, clubs in our area. We're, we're, we're in the Southeast, but we're heavily involved in that. And so what that has produced over time is when you, when you give content, you give truthful content, uh, reciprocal uh, returns are, are unbelievable. Uh, people trust you more because you're giving them answers that most companies don't want to say. <laughs> we, we call that answering the ugly questions. And that has worked quite well. If, uh, and, and it doesn't hurt that our origination company is called Carolina Hard Money. So the name of the company uh, is what we do and where we do it because we're headquartered in the Carolinas. So if you're using, you know, Google search, uh, our URL has most of the keywords in it. <laughs> yeah. uh, so we're, we always place uh, on the first page in the Google searches if you're looking for hard money loans in the Carolinas. Now, we don't just do Carolinas, yeah. but uh, that, that's a good, good source of business. I love it. Awesome, guys. What key markets do you guys operate in and why do you operate in them? Great question. As, as, as Bill um, alluded to, we operate in the Carolinas, obviously, Carolina hard money, Carolina capital management, so North and South Carolina, but we operate uh, primarily in the, the Southeast. So we are in Georgia, Virginia, Northern Florida, um, I guess kind of Eastern Tennessee, uh, that area. Um, we, don't, we don't do a lot in other states, but kind of mostly the states that touch the Carolinas. And, and why we're in those, because we know those markets. We're, we're here, we're boots on the ground. Um, most projects that we do, uh, we can drive to from our office within uh, you know, an hour or two. So that's, that's why we're there because we only want to lend in areas that we know and understand. Yeah, that doesn't, doesn't hurt that you have to drive to places now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, we, now we just drive. So uh, yeah. my four hour rule of, uh, you know, if it takes longer than four hours to get there by driving, I fly is no longer in place. No, right. you just drive. <laughs> That's funny. Um, what is your guys's investment philosophy and how do you determine whether a deal is worth doing or not? All right. I'm going to take the first part of this question. I'm going to let Jonathan take the second half. Right. So our, our philosophy is that uh, we are going to preserve capital at all costs. We are not chasing yield. Um, we are, I don't want to say we're boring and vanilla, but we're boring and vanilla. And there's nothing wrong with boring and vanilla. Um, people have to have a investment strategy that covers a lot of the different bases. Okay. And you're going to have stuff that's in your portfolio. There's a little bit more risky than others. Uh, but in return for the risk, you get a, a higher return. Uh, in, in our case, uh, we are 90% single family uh, and we're sticking mainly, and I mean seriously mainly, <laughs> in the affordable housing arena. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, every market is different. Our particular market, anything below $350,000 is affordable housing. Uh, the reason we do that is because uh, as real estate investing goes, uh, and funds go for that matter, uh, there's not a lot of liquidity in these funds. The, the money, if you're doing your job correctly, is out working. Mm -hmm. uh, however, if you're in the single family affordable housing arena, those tend to turn over quicker. So uh, we're looking to have loans turn over at least every six months. So that makes you more liquid than uh, other types of funds. That said, in the affordable housing side of things, it's also uh, the it's the slice of the pie that most people want. So affordable housing, you're going to have empty nesters 
first time home buyers and real estate investors are all interested in those types of properties. So if the worst thing happens and you have to take a property back, and then the even worse thing happens and you can't sell that property right away, at least you can rent those out for your expected return. You can't rent a million dollar house out for what your expected return is gonna be. They're gonna sit on the market a lot longer and as a lender, first and foremost, your uh, idea is if I have to take this property back, how quickly can I sell it and get the money back and reinvest it again? Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter how much you can make on the property, you need to get that money reinvested because it costs you more on lost opportunity. So we focus in on affordable housing, same thing with the multifamily stuff. It really is the uh, affordable housing. And then uh, we love the self storage space too on our commercial side of things, because that's very uh, re recession resistant a a as well. Yep. And, you know, there's a, an old philosophy that says under any uh, market uh, conditions, you need two things. One is food and one is shelter. And so that's why we focus mainly on, well, on residential, but yep. uh, that's our philosophy. We're, we're just, safe and boring. Uh, our, our returns though, if you're someone who is looking for growth, uh, our, our fund is a great place to put your money because uh, you can reinvest your earnings every quarter and you can utilize compounding to outperform what our fund is actually uh, doing. And I'll give you a quick example. Let's assume you have a nine and a quarter percent annualized return. If you reinvested that money every quarter, for 60 months, that nine and a quarter turns into around 11 and a half. So it makes a big difference. Even though we're boring, <laughs> I'm gonna stop saying that. Even though we're conservative, uh, you can still outperform the fund uh, utilizing a compound strategy. Absolutely. Yeah. That's why compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I'm sorry, the second half of that was yeah, well, uh, finding out whether a deal is worth doing. Yeah. Yeah, so as, as Bill said, we, we focus mostly on the affordable housing section. So, you know, what what is the asset is what the first thing that we look at. And then beyond that, it's does the borrower have skin in the game? Do they have the ability to debt service the loan? Does the property have the ability to debt service itself? Um, so, as you know, as Bill was saying in our, in our philosophy, we're, you know, we want to look at properties that are affordable, um, but also strategic to be um, available to the biggest buying pool that there is. So um, one is the asset um, because we are short-term lenders. We're looking heavy at the asset, but we're also looking at the borrower. Can you afford this? Do you have the income stream to maintain the debt service across the life of this loan? And, uh, and is, you know, is, title and everything else that we're, you know, we're looking at in our due diligence process, do all of those things, check all of our boxes. So there, I mean, there's a rigorous due diligence uh, due diligence process that we go through. It's very similar to um, a bank, except we're a lot more efficient and quicker at it. I, I want to put one little cherry on top of that. We're also um, in growth markets and, and that's, a, yeah. that's a big difference there as well. Um, yeah. We're in the Southeast. Southeast is a very growing market. And uh, I would, uh, other parts of the country, even in the Southeast, if it's an area where the, uh, it's not growing, that more people are leaving than coming, we're not going to be there either. Yeah. 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 I mean, Cincinnati's a prime example to use for that. Yeah. If, you know, you have declining uh, population, then it's, it's usually not the best market to go yeah. in. No. Great. I love it. Um, boring and vanilla is proven to work. So. <laughs> Singles and doubles. That's right. <laughs> um, how do you guys generate value once you've made an investment? And what do you do to ensure you get a return on your capital? Yeah, so I'll, I'll take the first part of that. Uh, what do we do to generate value once we've made an investment? Um, I'll talk to, you know, first to the, I guess, the, the borrowing side is how do we generate uh, value on that? education. We are really big in education. Um, Wendy and Bill have over 30 years each in, in uh, experience in the real estate market. And we want to pass that, that knowledge off to people. And we want, we want to help 
Um, we, I think sometimes we say we will hold your hand through the process, but we, we want to do that. We want to be there across every step that you go through. And that's how we, we generate value. That's why we have so many repeat customers is if it's a bad deal, we're going to tell you, we're going to let you know, like, and here's the reasons why it's not a good deal. Um, so that education piece, I think, is the biggest value that we give. Um, and then same thing, uh, very similar on, on the fund side. And you can you can probably speak better to this bill, but we do a lot of education on the on the fund side as well. And part of that education is diversification. We don't if we don't want all of someone's money, you, nor should you give one person all your money ever. You need to diversify that. So that's part of our education piece on the investment side is diversify your investments so that you are secure have a little bit of vanilla but also go go get some chocolate over there too but you know ha- have both yeah part, the main key to any business is relationships um we don't make any money unless we make loans so when we do tell a uh, potential uh, client on the borrowing side you know this is not a deal you don't need it you don't want it it's not because we want to keep it and give it to somebody else. We don't want it because <laughs> you are not going to win. And if you don't win, then our investors don't win. And the last thing I want you to do as a borrower, especially if it's your, uh, you're, you're fairly new and, and we r- really, we go a long way to make sure that we have experienced people. Mm-hmm. If you're not experienced, we find you a mentor to help you mm-hmm. get experience. Uh, but that said, um, it does, it's not good business to just do deals for the sake of doing deals. That's why we're conservative. Yeah. Um, one of the ways that we have to continue to uh, generate uh, returns for our investors to, to give them uh, decent yields over a long period of time. I told you that we expect our loans to be in the pipeline or in the system for six months at a time. Um, we... Uh, employ a couple of different methods of doing that. We will sell uh, chunks of our portfolio to bigger funds who are really only interested in the interest payments. And part of our business and our our investors uh, also make uh, a certain amount of money on the fees that we charge on the origination. So the, the, the way the investors make their money, we split the origination fees. So it is beneficial for us to get new origination fees every six months. So if these loans aren't paying off or maturing, if it comes up to the maturity date and it doesn't look like they're gonna finish, we'll sell off blocks of those loans to other funds. And then we take that money and then we make new loans with them. Uh, We also have deals with uh, institutional investors and insurance companies who will uh, buy at a lower rate than what we charged. So we're able to stay uh, participation. We use participation, so to speak. Yes. So we'll stay in the deal a little bit. We'll sell off half of it, let's say, and that way it splits the risk between us and them, mm-hmm. but we're still getting uh, a little bit higher rate of return than we normally would. We still get, um, and I don't want to get too deep into the weeds, but we get a return from the loan that they bought plus a return that we're all already getting because we're uh, invested in that loan. And two things I think that I would, I'd like to build on that if I can is, no. uh, <laughs> is uh, one, points or origination fees that go in the fund, they are calculated on an accrual basis, meaning that they get divided monthly across the life of the loan. So if we sell loans sooner, the investors realize that return much quicker and it boosts the return. So that's, yeah. that's one piece. And then, you know, the, the other piece is when we, for, when we do a participation, just to give an example, if we sold 80% of the loan and we participated and that loan was, let's just say 12% interest and someone's buying it at, at 8% on the 80%, then our 20% is generating almost a 30% return. Um, I know that's a lot of numbers right there, but it, you know, 30% yeah. return is what you can generate in that kind of scenario. So that's, and you know, that's a, that's a way that we can add value. For yeah. Sure. So it's creating value on something that we've already created value on. It's creating additional value. Yeah. Now the key to all this is we're still servicing all these loans. Uh, so we're still maintaining the relationship with, with the borrower. So we're there, we're still their first 
uh, point of contact for the draws and for receiving our interest payments as well. Yep. Awesome. I think that was like the best answer ever. <laughs> <laughs> Your check is in the mail. <laughs> um, I just want to know who are the key players in the management of the fund? Well, uh, I am the, uh, I guess, manager of the fund. Thank God, Father. Title-wise. Uh, my, my job there is managing the fund as well as um, trying to acquire new investors. So I'm on the capital uh, raising side of things mainly. Mm -hmm. um, Jonathan is a key player here because he's working our secondary marketing as well. Um, Wendy, uh, our, our, uh, the other partners, she is focusing mainly on the single family lending side of things. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think it's key when you have a small fund to have lots of eyes on the fund. Yeah. And so we have a um, fund administration company, which, by the way, is Verivest. <laughs> uh, we also have two CPA firms that we work with. So we have one CPA firm that does our tax returns. We have an additional CPA firm that does all of our uh, year end audits as well. So uh, transparency and honesty is with uh, everything that we do. And we wanted to make sure that any investor that got into our fund knew that it, there was a lot of eyes on that. And I think if, if Wendy was here, she would describe the key players as, you know, Bill, myself and her, and like a three-legged stool, we all lean on each other. Bill raises the money, uh, Wendy and I put the money out, and then I try to recycle the money as, as often as we can. So between all of us leaning on each other, we, you know, we accomplish our goal. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much. It was so nice meeting and chatting with you guys today.